If you've been thinking about AORUS and Gigabyte motherboards, you'll likely want to know how good their RGB software is before you buy. Meet Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0. And in this video is part of my RGB Explained mini series, link in the video description for you. We're going to be doing a deep analysis of Gigabyte RGB Fusion's features, lighting effects, and overall usability. And I'll actually be doing this video for every single RGB solution that I can get my hands on, from Asus Aura to Razer Chroma, NZXT Cam to Corsair IQ, literally all of them. Then we're going to be doing a final roundup to find out which RGB software is the best. So, starting with the analysis of Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0, let's find out which RGB software is right for you. So, in these videos where we analyze RGB software, I want to cover some really important questions that you actually just can't find anywhere else. Stuff like, what do the effects actually look like? And is there a max number of LEDs that can be used within these effects? Can you customize the effects, stack effects, calibrate outputs, import and export profiles? To me, and I assume to many of you guys, the answer to these questions could be real deal breakers. Not just for my own system, but for friends and recommendations too. So we're going to split these videos up into three main sections. The test system and how the lighting is configured from hardware perspective because this will determine how the lighting will flow throughout the system. Then we're going to move into the software features and usability, including the top questions that you didn't even know that you needed the answer to. And then of course, we will cover the effects and what they look like inside and outside of the system. So let me show you our test system and why these random RGB strips are here. Do you wanna know something funny? This is probably the only PC that I've built where the RGB is the most important part of the computer and the rest of the specs are actually pretty much irrelevant. But I will have the full specs with product links in the video description for you. But the things that are the most important for this video are the Gigabyte B550 Gaming X V2 motherboard, the G-Skill NK360 AIO, Gigabyte RTX 3060 Vision, all inside this Lian Li Lancol 2 mesh case, which is a beautiful case to be honest. But we also need to talk about the connected RGB devices and how they're wired. One of our headers is split two ways with one of those ways going to all of the ARGB fans, starting at the back, daisy chained all the way down to the front bottom. And the other part of that splitter is being sent directly to this ARGB strip. The reason being is so that you can see how the effect will display on daisy chained fans and also on a strip simultaneously. And our second ARGB header is also being split two ways. One way is going to the G-Skill Enki pump block and the other way is going to this ARGB strip that's running along here and down here that's providing accent lighting within the case. As for our non-addressable RGB, we also have another splitter going two ways. One way going to this RGB strip so that you can see what the effect looks like and the other way providing some accent lighting behind the radiator. This is probably where I would actually put it in a build. And I'm going to keep this set up as close as possible for all future videos in this series. And I'll only make changes if they make sense and I will update you guys of those changes. But let's have a look if Gigabyte RGB Fusion is any good. Okay, so this is Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0, the software that Gigabyte has made to allow you to control your RGB software. This is version B21.0520.1. And I'm going to go through some of the most important questions that you might have with an RGB software and also the usability UX and any bugs that I find. So question number one that you likely have is how many effects do you actually get with this software? So the section that we're in at the moment is what I like to call global effects. They're going to change every one of the connected devices. And here we have eight different effects and off. But if we go into the digital LED, we get a lot more effects. So we'll show you the effects in a bit, but in total you have 18 different lighting effects between the motherboard, what you're seeing here, and also the global effects, which you'll see in sync mode. This is not including memory or GPU because they are highly dependent on what memory and GPU you actually have installed. So the next question that I want to cover is, are the effects stackable? Now what I mean by stackable is, say if we go onto this digital LED, what a stackable effect would do is say, if you had a bright white, as a static effect, as you can see here, but then you could overlay something like a pulse red on top of it. And as the red fades out, the white would fade in because the red would be on top of the white effect, hence stackable effects. And unfortunately, stacking effects is not possible with this software, nor is being able to actually edit the effect with fine levels of granularity. You can't change how the effect appears on the strip. You'll have six different speed levels if you can control the speed, and also 10 different brightness levels if you can control the brightness. And of course, on a lot of these effects, you can change the color too. In terms of what your maximum LED count is, in theory, for the non-addressable strip, it's limitless until you break your motherboard by drawing too many amps. But in the digital RGB strips, you can assign over 300 LEDs worth of values, which is an incredible amount. And I don't see many people going above that. But a question that's more important than the maximum amount of LEDs is, can you assign how many LEDs are in an effect or in a strip? 
And the answer to that question is no. And that's really unfortunate. I'll show you why by using digital D. Now you see in this effect, it duplicates after a set amount of LEDs. In the case of digital D, I believe it's 16 or 20 LEDs. So I'll have to double check and count that. But essentially this RGB strip right here, that has 26 LEDs in it. Now, if I could tell the effect that there's 26 LEDs in that strip, that effect would span the entire strip and not be duplicated all the way down it. This is a feature that I would love to see and should be implemented in all RGB software. Next up is RGB calibration. Now this is important because some RGB strips and devices, they actually have their RG and B values swapped around on the strip, which makes it really annoying because sometimes you'll try and display red and you'll get blue instead. And if there's no way to calibrate this in software, it means that you're just gonna have to live with it. Now, fortunately enough with Gigabyte RGB Fusion, you can calibrate it. If we say choose this RGB strip, we can tell it that it's displaying blue at the moment, displaying red, and then displaying green and the software will recalibrate its outputs based on that. That's a fantastic feature. And although it's only going to be relevant to a small amount of people, the people that it is going to be relevant for are going to be so happy that it's been implemented. Next up is profiles. Can you give your profile to a friend or take your friend's profile and put it into your system? I think profile sharing is so important and you can do that. You've got import and export profiles right here. Although they're not perfect and absolutely not the way that I'd implement it. I'll speak about this a bit more in the usability section, but it's, it's not good. But one thing that a lot of RGB manufacturers have been doing have been integrating other products and services within their RGB software. And Gigabyte is no exception. What they've done is integrate an iOS and Android app into their RGB software so that you can control it via your phone instead of via the desktop app. The only problem is I could not get it working, even after implementing the firewall settings that they recommend. So it's no wonder the app has a two star rating. In terms of GPU support, you have native support for Gigabyte and Aorus GPUs with effects very much dependent on what GPU that you have installed. As far as I'm aware, this is going to be pretty much the bare minimum of effects that you would get with your GPU. But in terms of memory, the biggest question is what memory does it support? And I'm happy to tell you that it supports memory from a lot of the most popular memory manufacturers from G-Skill, Corsair, HyperX, Ballistics, Patriot, T-Force and XPG, but not Oloy. And when it comes to controlling the LEDs, this is going to be very much dependent on the memory that you have installed. This is the Trident Z Neos, and we can say control each independent LED and also each module independently, which is great. Now then, the usability and bug section. This is where Gigabyte RGB Fusion should really be embarrassed. I've worked in software for quite a long time as a developer and product manager, and releasing software like this, honestly, we were a team much smaller than I assume Gigabyte has, and we definitely would not release software that was in this state. Let me show you some critical examples of what I mean. So number one, this it might even seem small to a lot of people, but it's ridiculous. What is with this capitalization? It looks to be that maybe the non-addressable effects are capitalized and the addressable ones are non-capitalized throughout. They, they are camel case compared to full caps. But why is that relevant to the user? What is the user getting from that information? It, it seems stupid and if anything, it just looks messy and all over the place. And keeping in with this section, what the hell is digital A, digital B, digital I? Like, how am I meant to know what that is? That is nondescript in every sense of the word. So if I really like digital E, for example, and I like this effect, but I decide that I want to try digital H for a while. And then I'm like, oh, wait, what was my effect? Hang on, was it digital A? I really want to go back to my previous effect. Which one was it? Is it digital G? Is it digital F? Just give me a name that's memorable for the effect that really shouldn't be that difficult. And speaking of the effects, it would be really nice to get some of the global effects integrated within the addressable RGB headers or the non-addressable RGB headers. Because in all fairness, there's no reason why music, random and game can't be implemented into these headers. And keeping in with the same theme, what's going on with all these different fonts and different capitalizations? Apply, reset, calibration is lowercase, but apply and reset are uppercase. And there's completely different fonts going on all over the place. It just looks, it looks like somebody designed it in school. But in all fairness, to give Gigabyte some praise, there's a few different ways that you can set the color for the effects, which are quite intuitive. You have predefined colors up the top here, and you can also set favorite colors, which is really nice because if I want to set a specific pink, let's say, I would click this color dropper, click on the pink that I want, and then deselect the color dropper. Now this custom color is going to remain persistent between all of the effects so that I can click it. And there we go, that would then be color match between all of my connected devices, as well as giving you the ability to set a hex value. So if we go back to here, we change this to one, two, three, four, 
four zeros double F, that gives us 100% blue. The only problem is the hex value setter actually just doesn't work. You can't, you can't update using the hex values, which is stupid. That bug really should have been caught. And I promise you that I talk about the import and export feature. Now, a lot of people won't realize which is which. This is import, that is export. Export is typically an arrow outside of a box and import is typically an arrow inside of a box. Now, it would have been really nice if I had some text telling me that if I hovered over the icon, but that's not the case. Now, on top of that, it would have been really nice if this file browser window was telling me whether it was import or exporting instead of just selecting a file, which is just ridiculous. And my last complaint about the import and export is that when you import a profile, it overrides the profile that you're currently on. So you need to add a profile, then import the profile that you want to for it to override the profile that you're on. This is a big distinction compared to appending to the list, because if you set up a profile that you really like, and then a friend has given you theirs, you will then override the profile that you're currently on, which may have taken you a significant amount of time to set up. And the way that I would like that to be implemented is if it would be appended to the list. So add a new profile called profile three or whatever the profile's called. That is the better way to do it. In terms of stupid usability within the memory, DDR1, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4. There is a significant reason why that is absolutely stupid. This is memory module one, module two, module three, module four. DDR one, two, three, and four are something else that's quite important and should not be called this in this software. That does not make sense. Like honestly, from a software perspective, who thought that this was a good idea? Like, do you even know what computer hardware is? What DDR two is? What DDR three is? So calling these DDR one, two, three, and four it just makes things unnecessarily confusing compared to module one, module two, module three, module four. And the problem is if I change one of these modules, how is this module two? Because in the line, it's the third module in, and as you're populating modules, it's the fourth module that you would populate. So in what world is this module two? That's just ridiculous. So now I want to talk about a couple of the bugs that I found in Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0. Now bear in mind that this is a best case scenario. This is a brand new install of Windows with nothing else on it apart from OBS Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0. There's not even Chrome installed on this. So to mess up in this situation is a pretty significant failure. So now let's talk about bugs within Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0. One of them that I have already mentioned is that you can't set the hex color code. Okay, two. Really? Did you know that a lot of colors start with zero? So bug number one is the hex color code picker is overwriting values as you're typing them. If they start with zero, it doesn't like that it's not a number, I guess. <sighs> bug number two, another bug with the hex color code picker, this should be 100% blue. Now you can't update it. It's typically enter to update a value in a box like this. In fact, it is enter to update the RGB values. The hex color code picker just doesn't work there. Another bug that I found is that I can't update brightness control on the memory. It just doesn't seem to do anything at all. These are G-Skill Trident Z Neos. These are exceptionally popular memory. And on top of that, when I swapped out the memory to Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB, it worked fine. It worked well with the Corsair memory, albeit the effects were very, very lackluster. I had to enable SDKs and plugins within IQ, which is fine. That's a pretty typical thing to have to do. But then when I swapped back to the G-Skill Trident Z Neos, it didn't recognize any of the memory modules until I uninstalled IQ, which is a horrible experience because I might have a Corsair keyboard. I might have Corsair headphones. Do I have to uninstall IQ to control the RGB on my memory modules? Because that would then mess up my entire setup if I'm Corsair integrated. So what I'm going to do is give you guys an overview and my opinion of the effects within Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0 here in this video. But if you did want to see all of the effects in much more detail, then I do have good news for you. I have that video uploaded on a separate channel that I've just created for additional content such as this. I'll have that linked in the video description for you to check out. This is honestly because balancing time is something that I have to be acutely aware of on this platform. And the effects video is likely going to be just as long as this video in its entirety. So creating a separate channel for stuff like this additional content makes the most sense. And it also also means that I have a place to upload behind the scenes content. So please feel free to check it out, subscribe if you want to.
But as an overview, the effects within Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0, in my opinion, are just not very good for many reasons. I would honestly say that the effects aren't extremely imaginative or unique, and most of them don't display very well on a device or daisy chain devices comprising of more than about 20 LEDs, because that's just how Gigabyte have implemented the effects. You can see this clearly with Digital B, for example, and the effect duplication right here, which causes the fans to look pretty terrible, to be honest. But what about a default rainbow cycle? Surely they can't have f***ed that up too badly. Well, they actually kind of did. The stepping within many of the effects is extremely harsh, like with Color Cycle, and the transition from one color to another is not smooth at all, making it look super bug in basement. Then, when we take a look at Digital Wave, we don't see the stepping problem anymore, but we do start to see some speed control issues, as the six different speed levels seem non-linear, and I was often wanting to set the speed somewhere in between what was possible within the software. You then add in the fact that the music mode is as offbeat as I am on the dance floor. Yeah, that's awful. And the game mode looks to only work with two games. Two popular games, but still only two games. It starts to become extremely disappointing. I would best describe it as a lack of imagination and poor implementation. So, in conclusion, Gigabyte's RGB Fusion 2.0 software stinks of a company who sees this software as a cost, not an investment. They have done barely enough to keep up with the competition so that they can put an RGB software logo on their packaging, but care very little about the implementation. The effects themselves, the stepping within the effects, the usability, and the bugs demonstrate this clearly. And my suggestion to you is to do everything that you can to stay away from Gigabyte RGB Fusion until Gigabyte starts to care enough to fix it. And if you're looking at buying a Gigabyte motherboard and care about RGB, you should also expect to be buying into a third-party controller now or in the future. Something like Razer Chroma, Corsair IQ, NZXT Hue. But how do you know if those are any good? Well, for that, you're going to have to get subscribed and watch my upcoming analysis of those. But if I haven't answered any questions that you had, please comment them in the video description and I'll do my best to include them in future videos within these series. Otherwise, guys, a like is always appreciated and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.